Hi, welcome to another video by Fortune Buchholz of NotFortunesFool.com. And as you can see today, instead of my usual coffee table video, we are outside on my balcony to get the benefit of the beautiful day, the beautiful sunshine, the warm air here. So you're still going to get the usual dogma natural light effect because, you know, I'm committed to that. But you are going to get, you know, some outside. So hopefully some of the strange things that happen when I'm indoors, like suddenly the camera turning green and all that, you know, will be uh, less bothersome here. But anyway, here we are. So thank you. Uh, I really, again, want to start by thanking everyone uh, and being very grateful for the continuing support and interest in my videos and work around Chiro Marchetti's fin de siècle kipper, especially in how I mix them with his gilded reverie, the Norman deck. So I just wanted to talk uh, about that uh, for a little bit, and that's going to be the subject of the video today. Hopefully it won't be too long. So, you know, I am not the first person, Lord knows, I'm far from the first person to mix both the Lenormand and the Kipper decks together. It's a common practice in both Switzerland and Germany, as well as Austria and Denmark. So, you know, people have written lots of books about it. There's lots of articles about it. Uh, they tend to be mostly in German, so people uh, find them inaccessible. Um, there are lots of ways to do it. I'm just going to tell you, as always, the way that I do it. Again, there is no Kipper or Lenormand dictator, no matter what people try to tell you. And so you should just experiment with what I do if you're interested. See if it works for you. And if not, you know, find something that does work for you because we're all in it together and we're all learning together, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and talk about a couple of the questions that I have been commonly getting in the past few weeks about this practice of mixing the two decks together. The first question I often get is, what do I do if I don't get one of the standard significators? So, and by standard significators, I mean in either deck, the lady, this is of course the lady from Chiro Marchetti's Gilded Lenormand, or the Hauptpersonen, the lady from Chiro's Kipper deck, right? So what happens if I get neither of those? Well, you know, don't worry about it because you should wait and see what the client's real question and real concern is, right? So I recently had this happen to me and uh, the lady's question was actually about work, right? I laid out the cards and I said, what is your question? What is your concern? And she goes, I'm really concerned about what's going on at my job. It's all crazy, lots of politics. And so I was very easy, you know, it was very easy I was able to say to her, dude, it's not about you. You're not here, right? It's about stuff that's going on with other people who are above you and are below you. So don't worry about it. Just, you know, this is sort of, you know, the psychological cause and effect that's going down. And here are some suggestions that you might want, you know, from the cards to kind of find out, you know, what it is that you might do to like stay out of it, right? You know, so she looked at the cards and she understood right away how they applied to her and what her options were and so she was able to take her own advice in her own language and use the cards to create her own symbol symbolic actions right which is of course what we always want when we do a reading is for the client to see the cards in their own language and solve their own problems and she was at, you know able to do that which is as always one of the great benefits of both the Kipper and the Lenormand is that they're very easy for sitters to understand and people can often immediately grasp you know, the message in their consciousness and they can look at the cards, immediately see their thoughts mirrored in them and go to town. So that was a great success, right? Another issue, of course, um, is that sometimes you, as I said, you get them both, right? And so, you know, then you have to ask yourself, like, is this a Jekyll Hyde situation? Are you her in this circumstance? And then sometimes also her is one side shadow and one side, you know, the you you want to be is one aspirational, is one past, is one present. You know, you have to kind of talk to the client and just read the cards in the context of the question and how they lay on the table, often using the houses to see how this, you know, will work out. I've also had cases where these ended up being same-sex partners. So that's again something else that you should, you know, talk to the sitter about or, or hopefully the sitter, you know, is upfront about this and then you can just ask them. No big deal, right? The Lenormand and the Kipper both easily accommodate all kinds of modern relationships without judgment. So, you know, you can just go ahead and go to town. So that's how, you know, I handle that situation. Another thing that often frequently happens is that we'll get two houses. Right? So often this is the house you actually live in. This may be the house of your dreams. 
you know, this may be the foundation that you have or the foundation you want to build for yourself. So just talk, you know, to the sitter very honestly about their question, what their goals are, you know, what's really behind their question. Often, as we all know, sitters will come in asking one thing which has actually nothing to do with their real concern, but it's what they feel comfortable asking. And the Lenormand and the Kipper are very, very adept, uh, you might almost say surgical, at piercing people's self-deception and self-delusion. But of course, you know, when we sit with people and are in a relationship with them, when we have these conversations with them, we often have to, you know, be circumspect, circumspect be polite, be empathetic, express our compassion, right, be non-judgmental and wait for sitters to come to their own understanding that, oh, dude, I am so totally not being honest with myself. Right? And that's something that will happen throughout the Grand Tableau if you handle the reading skillfully. So another thing that will sometimes happen is when you don't see um, people cards that you expect there, but you see other people cards there, is people will then l later tell you that their aspect of themselves, and a very good example of this happened about three weeks ago, when a lady came to me, you see this is the military man, the military officer, and asked for a mixed reading, and this was the only you know, person card that really kind of stood out due to its configuration on the table. There were other players, but this is the one that really seemed like it was going to be her. And then she said to me, you know, I'm struggling to understand why I've been so controlling with my daughter lately. And I'm like, woohoo, here we are. This is why this card seemed to be in such a prominent key position you know, in the tableau and why the other cards seem to be surrounding this one in a meaningful way was because she was concerned about this aspect of herself, this controlling, harsh, brusque, and even sarcastic side, her shadow side, so to speak, and she wanted to, you know, find out what was going on with that and think about ways she could deal with that and be more compassionate in the moment. Of course, I have you know, little exercises that people can try to do in their daily lives to help with that since as we know, the Kipper and the Lenormand will often assign you homework. So this is something that you know you can also look for. You can also see sometimes that people are thinking about other people, right? So this is a question here. Let me put this together here for you with these cards. Sometimes you may often see his or their or its thoughts, right? And then the other woman card. So you often see this, or I have in the past seen this in cases of idealization, right? If, you, if it's a question of what he's thinking of her, well, he thinks of her this way, you know, as determined by this card here and the surrounding cards as we normally determine personal characteristics or personal situations in the Lenormand and the Kipper by the surrounding cards, but she's actually like this and she's actually like over here, right? So that's another thing that you can, you know, also look out for. So these are just some of the hints that, you know, I have. Um, really, when you listen to what people's concerns are very deeply and work with them to formulate a good question, you'll understand really that, that even though you may run into these small number of cases, say about 5% mathematically, where the cards you don't expect appear on the table, there will be other cards that directly and piercingly address the, the sitter's real concern. So be open to that and be willing to work through that you know, in an empathic and relationship-based, non-judgmental way with the sitter to get them, you know, uh, as they help themselves through the process of understanding where they really are and what it is they're really trying to say to themselves. So, um, you know, that is kind of what I wanted to say, and those sort of addresses, you know, the main questions that I get, you know, what happens if you have two, what happens if you have none, what happens if it seems like she's somebody else, even the military person. I just wanted to kind of lay that out for you, and I hope that you'll get back to me and tell me kind of how that works for you and, and how you're feeling about that. So then the other uh, aspect that I, I get a lot of questions about are the houses situations in a grand tableau. Should you use the Kipper houses when mixing the decks or should you use the Lenormand houses when, Kipper, when mixing the decks? So what I tend to do is I tend to go by the nature of the question, right? So if it's a question a lot about people and psychology and complicated relationships, I will tend to use the Kipper houses. And if it's less so, if it's more, you know, practical, daily, external, dealing with animals, I'll tend to use the Lenormand houses, right? But then sometimes when you, you know, listen to the question and look at where, you know, the relevant cards are sitting, 
it becomes obvious to you that the cards themselves just make more sense and work much better if you choose one house system over another. This is something that comes from experience, right? So this is just a case of being able to trust yourself, developing a fluency with both house systems, and being able to apply them in the moment in the context of the sitter's question. So that's what works for me, and I hope that works for you. I hope I've addressed some of your major questions, and thank you for, again, you know, being so helpful and so supportive and so appreciative of my efforts. If you don't have Chiro's Kipper Deck, I do want to remind everyone that it is coming out soon from commercial publishers, um, you know, uh, and so you should be able to buy it easily very shortly in just a few months uh, in both the United States and in Europe, you know. And they'll be very nice commercial editions is what I'm given to understand and they will have the book with them the book that I was so privileged to be able to write with my co-authors, especially, of course, the super genius Suzanne Zitzel, of whom I'm so fond and of whom I have nothing but the most fantastic things to say about. Uh, so that said, I might make another video. Some people have asked me uh, some other questions about, you know, mixing the decks and other things that you can do with the decks and other spreads. So over the course of the next two or three weeks, if I have time, I will try to upload another shortish video I don't want to upload, you know, another 45-minute video like I have been doing in the past. Sorry about that, guys. And so since I do want to keep this rather short, again, I'm just going to thank you all, and I hope to see you soon. Enjoy your cards, and have a great day.